Hi, um, I'm Vicki Medland. I'm a volunteer with the Master Gardeners and also a volunteer with New Leaf Foods. And um, I'm retired from the Coffrin Center for Biodiversity at UW Green Bay. And I'm going to be uh, working with New Leaf to demonstrate how to get rid of jumping worms from your garden beds today. And that's why I'm wearing my mustard colored hat. Jumping worms are an interesting species because they're annual species. So they will, uh, they're um, hermaphrodites like all worms and they uh, mate and they form these little cocoons with two eggs uh, each and within the cocoon. The eggs are about a millimeter in size so you're not gonna really see those in the soil. Uh, then the adult worms actually die at the end of the season. So you're never going to find big worms in the spring. You're only going to find the little hatchlings. Uh, and an adult, but an adult worm can actually produce 30 clutches of eggs a season. So if they're hermaphrodites and they're all producing eggs and you've got a big number of, of worms, that even though they're annuals, they're going to be re reproducing really rapidly. So because I've caught mine within a year or two, I'm hoping that I don't have a lot of baby worms to get rid of. Uh, because these worms are death eaters, what they do is they're in the first few inches of the soil and they're eating the organic material in the soil. And then they come up to the surface at night and they make a, a kind of a pellet. So they tend to pelletize the soil. That uh, sort of concentrates that soil into these little balls. And uh, it isn't a very good fertilizer for the soil. They're not good aerators of the soil because they're close to the surface. They're not burrowing down deep like some of our native prairie worms do farther south. So they're not really, they're, they're doing the opposite of what you want. They're not moving nutrients down into the soil and water down into the soil. They're actually moving nutrients up to the surface and that is getting concentrated on the surface. And it, uh, you can, if you see this on your soil surface where it looks like coffee grounds maybe or little pellets, that is what you do not want to see. These are small right now because the worms are small. But last fall, um, I had a much larger pellets present in my soil because the worms had matured and were much larger. Why are jumping worms such a problem? They're not native to the United States. In fact, no worms are native to most of Wisconsin, especially up in the Green Bay area where we are. So all of the worm species were extirpated uh, during the glacial period and so they've been slowly migrating back but they're very slow. So all of the worms that we have that are not aquatic worms are uh, non-native species. Some of these species have become naturalized and some of the species like um, the big fishing worms uh, are uh, a, a very destructive they are duff uh, or litter uh, worms. So instead of burrowing deep into the soil like our more southern prairie worms, they actually live very close to the surface. And that's what jumping worms do too. You're likely to only find them within six inches of the surface. The problem with that is if they get into native habitats, is that they will um, destroy all of that leaf litter that's on the soil surface. 
all of our spring ephemerals and a lot of our invertebrate species like spiders use that all that leaf litter, leaf cover as habitat. And so when you remove that habitat, the soil starts to compact. It's bare in the winter. It gets really cold and we start to lose our native species that we want in those woodland habitats. Uh, so we want to get rid of them. that I started at this end of my raised beds is because this is where I had put that potted plant and it seems like this has the highest number of worms. Fortunately, I've only had them for a year. So I'm hoping that we don't have a huge number of worms to, to collect in here and I think as soon as you notice you have worms, you definitely should try to do the treatment. You can see I'm not being super perfect in this in terms of my measurements, but you could measure it out if you wanted to. So you can see um, we've got at least one worm that's come up to the surface. I actually have fewer worms than I thought I had, which is really great. Um, so I'll keep doing this. And you can see this is typical behavior for a jumping worm. Oh, another thing that jumping worms do besides thrash around like this is that if you disturb them, especially um, if birds try to, to uh, catch them or mice try to catch them, they will drop their tails just like some lizards do to try to escape predators. So I hope this guy doesn't do that, but we'll take him, we'll dump him in the water and then I'm just gonna uh, take him out, put him on the concrete and stomp on him, I guess. Once you have completed your beds, you've uh, poured mustard water and you've caught all the worms and killed them, you actually do have to come back in five days and do the process all over again to make sure that you didn't miss any worms. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of people uh, throughout Wisconsin, if you look at the DNR's map, you'll see that jumping worms are found in almost every county um, in sort of the south, mid, central, and northeast Wisconsin. The, the far north doesn't seem to have jumping worms, and I don't know why that is. It may be because it's too cold in the winter or just that they haven't gotten there yet. Uh, how can you prevent jumping worms? you need to be really careful about where your soil is coming from. So if you're setting up new beds, you want to make sure that that soil is not contaminated with worms. And that's getting a little bit harder to do, but you can, I would talk with your supplier and make sure that they're testing for jumping worms and, uh, to make sure that it's jumping worm free and if you're uh, use growing, starting your own um, seedlings, use a, a, a soilless, a bark-based soilless mix so that it won't have any mineral soil in it. And that should be worm-free because it's basically just shredded ground up tree bark uh, and wood sawdust and other components and make sure like I did not, 
that any plants you get from a garden center are worm free. So you could just pour mustard oil or mustard water right in those plants when you get them home, put them on the concrete and see if you find any worms. Especially if you buy a lot of plants. The other thing you can do is you can spray off all the soil off of the roots before you plant and that will prevent that problem with the worms. If you're planting bare root plants, you shouldn't have any worms because the eggs are and the worms are just in the soil. 